Hi, welcome to Gases Part 4. My name is Dr. English, and today we're going to be talking about the combined gas law. Specifically, we're going to look at what is the combined gas law, a combined gas law example, and then a little bit of practice at the end. So first, what is the combined gas law? Combined gas law is a single law that combines Boyle's and Charles law that states that the relationship among pressure, volume, and temperature in Kelvin of a fixed amount of gas. Remember here, the temperature must be in Kelvin. There's another law that's sort of incorporated into this, which is a pressure-temperature relationship, which is known as Gay-Lussac's law, but we don't really cover that in Regents Chemistry. So every time we talk about the combined gas law, we can derive either Boyle's law or Charles' law from the combined gas law. And again, we've mentioned this before. If we hold temperature constant, we have P1V1 is equal to P2V2, which is our pressure volume relationship. If we hold pressure constant, we have our V1T1 and V2T2 relationship, which is looking at more of a direct relationship between these two particular variables. In this particular tutorial, we're going to be talking about changing potentially all the variables and see how it affects one specific variable. Let's look at an example. An ideal gas exists at STP with a volume of 68 milliliters. If the volume decreases to 34 milliliters and the pressure increases to three atmospheres, what will the new temperature be? So the variable that we're looking for is a new temperature. For this particular example, because we have so many different things going on, I'm going to list out all my different variables. So I'm going to say P1 is equal to my initial pressure. Well, they're telling me that my pressure is at STP, which means I'm going to use atmospheres here. So one atmospheres. And I'm also choosing atmospheres because I can see over here that my P2 will ultimately be three atmospheres. So there's my P1 my V1. My V1 is listed at 68 milliliters. So 68 milliliters. And my T1, that goes back to the STP, meaning standard temperature and pressure. And remember, on table A of your reference table, standard temperature and pressure are defined. One atmosphere, 101.3 kPa, and 273 Kelvin. So I have my P1, my V1, and my T1. My P2 here is listed at three atmospheres. So three atmospheres. My V2 is listed as 34 milliliters. 34 milliliters. And I'm solving for the new temperature. So I'm solving for T2. This is going to be technically my x, my variable that I'm looking for. Now I'm going to take the information that is given to me and I'm going to plug it into this formula up here. So I'm going to have one atmosphere times a volume of 68 milliliters. I'm not gonna worry about converting this into liters. As long as my units for volume stay constant, I'm not gonna worry about it. So one atmosphere, 68 milliliters over 273 Kelvin. And then in, over on the other side, I'm going to have three atmospheres, 34 milliliters, and I'm going to be solving for T2, which is my X. Now what I want to do here is I want to cross multiply. So I'm going to be multiplying these two variables together plus the T2, that's the cross, the first step that I'm going to do. And then I'm going to multiply these three numbers together over here and set them equal to each other. So one times 68 times T2 is going to give me 68T2, the variable that I'm looking for. And three times 34 times 273 is going to give me 27,846. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 68, divide both sides by 68, and my final T2 temperature will be 410 Kelvin. So 410 Kelvin. And that is my final temperature. Now what I want you to do is stop, 
plug the known variables into your formula and solve for the unknown variable and see how you do. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. A sample of oxygen gas in a closed system has a volume of 400 milliliters at 1200 K at 0.25 atmosphere. Suddenly the temperature crashes to 100 K and the pressure increases to 5 atmospheres. What happened to the volume? So let's start out by listing out our variables. So P1, V1, T1, P2, V2, and then T2. Let's look at here. Sample of oxygen gas in a closed system has a volume of 400 milliliters. Well, there's my V1. So I'm going to list that first. 400 milliliters at 1200 K. So my temperature is 1200 K at 0 0.250 atmospheres. 0 0.250 atmospheres. All right, suddenly the temperature crashes to 100 K. So my T2. Wow, that's a big drop in temperature. The pressure increases to 5 atmospheres. So my P2 is going to now be 5 atmospheres. What happens to the volume? So V2 is my X. So now that I have everything listed out, I'm going to say, well, P1 V1 over T1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2, always good to write your formula. Then I'm going to take this information and plug it into my formula. So let's see, 0.250, 400 milliliters. Then I'm going to divide this by 1200 K. And then my P2 is five atmospheres. And my V2 is my X, so I'm solving for V2 and I'm going to divide that by 100K. So again, what I'm going to do here is cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply 100 times 400 times 2.5 to get one answer, and then I'm going to multiply my V2 times my five times my 1200, and if I do this and I solve for V2 at the end, my answer should be 1.67 milliliters. 1.67 milliliters. Let's try another practice problem. So again, I'd like you to stop, see if you can list all the variables, find the variable that you're solving for, plug it into your formula, and figure out your unknown. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. An unknown volume of helium gas is at a pressure of 75 kPa and a temperature of negative 100 degrees Celsius. At a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius and 25 kPa, the volume is determined to be 125 milliliters. What is the original volume? So the first thing that we're going to do is list out our variables. P1, V1, T1, P2, V2, and T2. An unknown volume of helium gas, so my V1 is going to be my X, is at a pressure of 75 kPa. My P1 is 75 kPa and a temperature of negative 100 degrees Celsius. So negative 100 degrees Celsius, which we need to convert into Kelvin, plus 273, which gives me 173 Kelvin at a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Celsius plus 273 gives me 323 Kelvin and 25 kPa, so P2 is 25 kPa. The volume is determined to be 125 milliliters, so 125 milliliters. What is the original volume? So again, we write our formula. P1, V1, T1 is equal to P2, V2 over T2. And then we substitute in the variables that we know. So my P1 is 75 kilopascals. My V1 is my X. My T1 is 173 Kelvin. 
my P2 is 25 kPa, my V2 is 125 milliliters, and my T2 is 323 Kelvin. The next thing that I'm going to want to do is to cross multiply. So 75 times x times 323 is equal to 173 25 times 125. And if I do this and I solve for my V1, I find that my answer is 22.3 milliliters. 22.3 milliliters. So what did you learn in this tutorial? We introduced the combined gas law, we did a combined gas law example, and then we did two practice problems at the end. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.